If you're checking this course, you're most likely wondering what you need to learn to become an Amazon virtual assistant and what skills you need to develop to be able to make a living out of it. If that's the case, well, you're in the right place. In this course, I'm going to tell you what you need to learn to become the best Amazon virtual assistant out there. I'm going to tell you which skills you need to develop in order to do the job as well as possible and how to market yourself so that you can attract clients and get hired and have the salary that you want. I will also tell you what you need to learn to go from being an Amazon virtual assistant all the way to being an Amazon consultant and effectively upgrade your income five times or even more. So why take my advice? Who am I? So I'm an Amazon e-commerce manager and I've been in sales and marketing for about eight years now, of which five have been working in Amazon and I've been working for small to medium sized companies and I've done pretty much anything that's related to Amazon and especially listing management and doing the kind of tasks that an Amazon virtual assistant would be doing. So I not only know the client side, I know exactly what sellers are looking for, but I also know what kind of work should be done and what skills need to be developed to be a good virtual assistant. So if this is what you're looking for, grab a cup of tea or coffee, grab something to take some notes, make yourself comfortable and let's get going. In order to be a good Amazon virtual assistant, you're going to need to have some skills naturally. So you can already tell that you're going to need some skills when it comes to working with Amazon. But a virtual assistant is not just about just completing the task on Amazon. You need to have a whole umbrella of skills if you want to be able to get a job as a virtual assistant and keep getting hired. The first set of skills that you're going to need are going to be organizational and communication skills. The biggest one is going to be your ability to manage tasks. So managing tasks properly is going to be one of the most important things because if you can't just manage your work properly, then your clients are not going to be happy with you. They're not going to want to work with you. They're not going to give you anything. This is one of the most foundational one and being properly organized with your tasks is something that I see. I see a lot of potential virtual assistants make mistakes there and they might seem good. They might seem like they have the skills, but because they're not able to structure their work properly, they just fall behind and they don't get hired anymore. So one of the first things you can do to make sure that you're fully organized with your workload is to have a form of task tracking software. So this can range from anywhere from just having a basic Excel spreadsheet where you just note down in one column what you have to do and then uh, the deadlines and then all the different details about the task and if it has been completed all the way to some professional task tracking software. I personally use Asana for my own work, um, for both my clients and myself. It's one I can recommend. There's also a free version for it. Uh, I'm sure there's some other options. You can also look online and I'm sure you'll find loads of different possibilities there. But the point is you need to have a system to really keep track of what you're doing, what you have to do. There's nothing worse than having a client who's expecting a certain task from you and you just have forgotten about it or it's not noted down or it's just lost somewhere and you get that email that says what's happening with this and then you just have to tell them, oh, it has to be delayed and you have to lie about it because you didn't properly track it, okay? This can really kill your career. So being able to show that you can really track the task and you can deliver on time that shows professionalism and it's going to make your work so much easier. So if you're not already somebody who organizes their tasks very well, then I strongly suggest that you learn how to manage your tasks. There's going to be loads of tutorial on that. I will also create some of my own courses on keeping track of the tasks. It's nothing too difficult. It's just habit building, but it is critical. Usually your clients will have one. So unless they're individual sellers, they usually will have some sort of task tracking software. 
If they don't, then you can always recommend one to them. And I recommend that as well because you're scoring extra points. So if you're coming already to the client and saying, don't worry, I already have a system to manage the task, let's use that, then they are going to think, oh, this guy's organized, this guy's a proper worker, he's a professional. That's going to leave a good impact on your, all your future clients. Secondly, and that's kind of related to the task, but you need to have a clear understanding of what your client's objectives are. So you can be the kind of virtual assistant who just does the task. There's just do A, you do A. There's B, you do B. But if you want to distinguish yourself from the competition and if you want to really be recognized as a professional Amazon virtual assistant, then you need to have an understanding of what your client really wants to do. What's the strategy? What's, what's going on? What's, in what phase is their business? What's their business model? In what stage of growth is the industry? You've got to have an understanding of all these different things. You've got to wrap your head around your client. It should be always clear for you why a task is being created. It should be Oh, they asked me to do a keyword research. Okay, that's for this product because they're starting this product line, they're starting this brand and they're starting to push it and these are the best products. So, of course, don't be afraid to ask them details, okay? This also shows interest. You're not just like a vegetable, just doing the task like a robot. You're actually looking to solve their problems. And that's what they are going to expect from you as a virtual assistant. It's not just going to be about completing the tasks, it's about helping their business. Ultimately, this is what every single client wants. This is what every seller wants. This is what we want when we hire external help. We don't just want somebody who's going to do the job and we have to spoon feed them the information. What we want is somebody who understands what we're trying to do and then delivers the results. I also recommend that you have a task template. That is that all your tasks are always going to be looking the same way. So this makes it a lot easier because then, again, this is structure. This shows you as being somebody structured and it makes it a lot easier for both you and your clients to understand really what's going on. Because if sometimes you have some task that is just a short title like keyword research and a very short description like we need it from product A, This you're not going to be able to truly tell what really needs to be done here. What are the objectives? What is it that they specifically want from you? If you always ensure that there's a structure and it's always followed, objectives are going to be clear, which means that you're going to save time on your side because you won't have to do revisions and send them uh, drafts, which afterwards they might say, oh no, that's not really what we wanted. Uh, can you do this or can you add this? So you're saving time and they're saving time. So always have this. And again, you make a good impression there. It's, you're showing that you're structured, that you're a professional. I recommend that you always go a little bit the extra mile, that you always do just a little bit more than what they expected. Now, you can only do this if you're already clear about their objectives. This is why I mentioned it previously as being something that's quite important. This is an important skill to have because that way you're going to be able to deliver more. And trust me, it's, it's great when you have a virtual assistant who doesn't just do what you ask them, but actually goes the extra mile. It says, I've completed the task that you gave me and I've also done this because I know that that fits within your overall strategy. If you manage to do that and straight from the beginning, then I can assure you that you're gonna be at the top of their list. Finally, for yourself and for your client, I recommend that you always get a clear record of what you have done. Having a clear record of what you have done is good for both you and your client. On your side, it's going to allow you to say, well, here's what I've been doing this is uh, how much value I've put into this. So then it's easier for you to say, okay, this is, this is how many hours I've, pour, I've poured in and I can justify it because this is what has been done. So 
easier for you to say, well, I've, I've done some extra hours and truly get paid for what you're doing. And on their side, it reassures them that they're actually paying you for something so that you're not just lazing about and that they're actually you're doing what you're being paid for. Next, let's talk about the Amazon specific skills. So as you can imagine, one of the most important things is going to be having good knowledge of the platform. So Amazon Seller Central. You've got to be familiar with it. You've got to know where things are. You've got to know where to get the inventory. You've got to know where to get the business information. You've got to know where to track the sales, how to track the inventory, how the, what the different product IDs are. You've got to know where to create the shipments. You've got to know how to access the, the PPC dashboard or the advertising dashboard. You've got to be familiar with all of that. Okay. Now, the good thing is there's crap loads of tutorials out there on how it works. Now, the platform is always evolving. It's always being updated, but honestly, it doesn't change that much and it's still very much comprehensible. And even without having your own business, you can already get some hands-on experience. You can already understand where is what, and that's going to already give you a big advantage compared to those who have never tried it before. Next thing, and that's not as much just Amazon as it is just a business skill in general, but that's going to be customer service skills. So having good knowledge of customer service is one of the biggest reasons why sellers want to hire an Amazon virtual assistant. You have always buyers who are going to send you messages asking about anything you can imagine. It's going to be about, well, most often it's going to be about any product defects, it's going to be about returns, it's going to be about when an item is going to come back online. Um, you get loads of different questions from customers running all the time. And the bigger, the bigger your business gets, the more questions you're going to have thrown at you. So having somebody who can take care of this in a professional manner, and that's the most important thing in a professional manner, is one of the biggest reasons why you would want to hire an Amazon virtual assistant. So naturally, that's going to be a skill that you really need to develop. So first things first, your English has to be very good. It has to be near impeccable. It doesn't have to be at a native level, but it has to be good enough so that you can, you can contact people and they wouldn't guess, for example, that English isn't your mother tongue. So if your English isn't too good right now, then do practice it before. Do take the necessary classes, go and find out how to do customer service. There are also a lot of courses about that. I do plan as well to do a quick mini course about customer service specifically for Amazon because there's a, a few little things that are different compared to, um, to other, other platforms or having your own business that you need to be aware of. So watch out for this course. I will be uh, putting down below the link if you want to get notified uh, as soon as possible when I publish this course here on Udemy. Next thing are gonna be your supply chain management skills. So for Amazon, there's a lot of repetitive shipment creation that's going to happen, okay? Um, as sellers have more and more products, there's gonna be somebody that needs to take care of um, knowing what's happening with the shipments, creating the send-ins from uh, the suppliers onto Amazon's warehouses. They're going to need tracking. There's going to be a reporting so that anytime the seller is going to ask you, okay, what's going on with this product? There's almost no stock. When's the stock coming? That you have already a clear sheet that says, this is what's happening for this product. This is this. That has been done. This shipment has been sent. It's due to arrive in, uh, in 12 days. All that sort of stuff. So, Supply chain management is one of the most important things in Amazon, simply because if there's no stock, there's no sales. That's, that's how simple it is. So very often these tasks are quite repetitive and most sellers in general, they will want to have a virtual assistant to do a lot of these repetitive tasks that they could be doing themselves, but are just too time consuming and they, they want to pass them on to somebody else so that they can focus on the bigger picture, uh, like 
strategy and new product research or development and such things. So for supply chain management, there's a lot of videos out there and courses that show how to do Amazon FBA and they do talk, there's always a section about supply chain management. There's a lot of them free, you can go and check them out. I personally am not going to be making courses about that, it's not too much my domain of expertise um, and I'm not too interested in it to be honest, but there are a lot of videos out there that will show you what to do. now. The platform is always evolving, so things will always change, but it will be easy for you to wrap your head around it. And I can assure you, after a little bit of practice, you will get right into it. But it's always something that the sellers can uh, teach you. But if uh, you can hit the ground running, again, you're going to be on top of the competition. There's a lot of people who want to be Amazon virtual assistants. So if you already have good knowledge about it and you've already done research, then when the sellers contact you and say, well, can you create shipments for me? Can you track them? If you can say, yes, I know how it goes. I've practiced it, I've learned it. Then uh, you're going to have a natural advantage um, compared to everyone else. Next, a lot of sellers want to have a virtual assistant to help them with advertising. So advertising or PPC is quite time consuming and there's a lot of data to crunch. So having somebody who can condense this data or make all the necessary changes where required is really nice. And the great thing is there's a very high skill ceiling there. So you can have just virtual assistants who just, um, just blindly follow uh, the script and just update, um, update some bids and some of them can be really knowledgeable in how to manage PPC and can actually really improve their campaigns compared to what the sellers themselves could do. So learning about PPC will be one of your great advantages. If you can put this on your CV, uh, wherever you're posting, uh, wherever you're displaying yourself uh, with sellers, if you show that you have advertising skills, then you're going to have a big advantage. And even beyond the advantage, it's something that a lot of sellers will say is required. And um, again, they can be spending the time to teach you um, how advertising works in general on, on Amazon. But I would say if you already have this knowledge, if you can once again hit the ground running, you're going to have a big advantage. I know for myself, when we've uh, hired some people, to uh, manage some PPC for us before we moved on to automatic uh, bidding software. We were very pleased when they already had some experience of some sort. There are also a lot of PPC courses out there. Um, this is something that I will also be making a short course about, not so much about how to do it specifically or where to go or where to click, but more about the intricacies. The good thing with PPC, as I mentioned, is there's a high skill ceiling, meaning that there can be a high difference between those who just perform sort of, but badly, and those who really have truly optimized campaigns. And there's, there's always some ticks and tips and tricks that you can use to really improve your campaigns, optimize them to the maximum. Uh, again, if you're interested in that, if you want to get notified when that course is on, then I suggest that you follow the link that's here and you will get notified as soon as it's out. One other big thing that you're going to be asked about, and that also goes into PVC as well, uh, but that's gonna be your keyword research. So being able to get the right keywords for any product that your client is gonna throw at you is a huge skill. This is again why having a good knowledge of English is really important here because with that, you'll be able to know all the different ways a product can be called. Also, you will know what problems the product fixes, and so you'll be able to put this into words, and then when you read on a list of potential keywords, um, you'll be able to tell, okay, this is relevant, this isn't, this is, this is somewhat relevant, and then you'll be able to make a good keyword research. Once you've done the keyword research, it's gonna be about optimizing the copy. Again, this is very language demanding. So being really good at 
the language itself, the grammar, the vocabulary, that's going to be critical to be writing some really good listings. Now, not every seller is going to ask that of you. Again, a lot of them will expect more of the number-based um, repetitive work, but this is to your advantage. If you learn it, if you know how to do it, that's one more thing that you can say that you can take off the shoulders of the sellers and that increases your chance to get hired. I will be making a short course about copywriting 101 specifically for Amazon. So if that's something that you really want to learn, then I suggest that again, you follow the link that I'm going to put now and just drop me your information and I will let you know as soon as the course is live. Finally, I would mention the ability to create reports as one of the biggest skills that is going to be required of a virtual assistant for Amazon. Now, there's loads of different kinds of report that you can pull. There's going to be um, sales report. There's going to be PPC report. There's going to be stock movement report. There's going to be ranking reports. There's going to be review changes reports. There's loads of different ones. Thankfully, most of them follow a similar format. Uh, but just having, in general, the ability to work with reports, databases, especially Excel or any form of table management software is going to be so useful for you, especially if you want to move out from being just a virtual assistant and move upwards towards being more of a consultant. Having these skills will allow you to really take a lot of data together and just put it into a useful recommendations for the sellers and trust me that is worth gold because there is so much happening and usually when you're into the day-to-day -day operations of managing an Amazon business you don't have time to be looking at the big picture get a comprehensive report and have just in a few lines what the next steps are and if you're able to do that if you're able to put together these this data into some actionable steps, then you're going to be worth so much more. So this is another topic where I will be creating a course myself. So if you're interested in learning, particularly Excel, Excel formulas, how to export the different um, tables um, and put all the data together to create at the end a comprehensive report that gives the sellers a clear idea of what uh, what the situation is and what the next steps are, then I suggest that once again, you subscribe and you give me your information so that I can afterwards contact you and let you know when it's live. So now that we've talked a little bit about the skills that are going to be awaited from you as an Amazon virtual assistant, let's talk about what's going to be quite important for you uh, because if you do not find any clients, then it doesn't matter how good you are, how many, how well your skills are honed, it's not going to matter. You're not going to be getting any jobs. You're not going to be making any money. So now this whole next section is going to be only dedicated to this. What I know works well for Amazon virtual assistants to find and retain clients and also very important to keep clients satisfied. So first, let's talk about the best platforms for you to market yourself on. As a general rule, Google is your friend. So what I always say that one must do when one tries to get customers is to think like a customer, to act out what the, your, what the customers are gonna be doing first. So in your case, it's going to be typing out what your clients are most likely to be looking for to be searching online and most often that's on Google. So start by putting yourself in the shoes of your customers, okay? So if they are going to be looking for you, if they are going to be looking for your skills, what value you're going to be offering, what are they going to type on Google or any kind of search engine, whichever one is the preferred one for your customer? And again, I said here for your customer, not for yourself. So that means if your clients are going to be um, mostly in, say, the US, then you're going to want to be looking at Google.com. If it's a different country, then look at what the most popular search engines are or where your clients are most likely to start their research online. Maybe it's not a search engine, maybe it's something else. 
but inform yourself on where your client is going to start their search. You've got to really put yourself in the mindset of, okay, what is my client going to say? They're looking for me. So what are they going to think about? So naturally, if you're not too familiar with your client, uh, this might not be so intuitive at first. So you can always start by thinking out yourself what you would do to find yourself. Or you can ask your friends and family or colleagues what they would do to try and find you. So very often for just a general Amazon VA assistant, that's going to be quite simple. They're going to go on Google and they're going to put hiring Amazon a VA or Amazon virtual assistant or any kind of these kind of keywords. Yeah. So then you're going to be looking at what comes up on the search results page. And these are going to be the top websites, the top results that your clients are going to be shown. So it's going to be quite likely that because it's at the very top, they're going to be clicking there and they're going to end up on these websites. So that should already give you a clue as to where they're going to be. If you see the first website is uh, a job forum or is uh, something like Upwork or Fiverr, which are actually some quite big platform, which I'll, I'll talk to in a second, then you know that this is where most of your clients are likely to be. And what that means then in turn is if you want to market yourself, you're going to want to market yourself on these platforms. So among the big top results, you're going to have a lot of freelancer platforms. That's mostly what the research are going to give back, regardless of the country where you search it from. So the biggest one that always comes is Fiverr. Now, Fiverr is better for small uh, projects, ad hoc projects. Not so many people are looking there for uh, VAs who are going to be um, working full time, 40 hours a week for years on end. But it is a starting point. It is one of the big results. It is where you're going to have the opportunity to market yourself. And the great thing with Fiverr is you can. There will be some websites where it will simply be, there will be barriers to entry. They're not going to just let anyone in. You might have to go through some regis registration, pay some fees, prove yourself and prove that you are already established before they start listing you. But that's going to be more premium. So if you're just starting off, right, if, if you just got the experience um, of what I just told you so far, and you're looking for just an easy way in, then Fiverr is a good option. You can start your listing, you can start um, getting some clients, you start getting some reviews, you start building a reputation for yourself. The way you have to look at this is you want to start small and then grow over time. Because if you start straight away trying to market yourself for the um, for huge companies or extremely wealthy clients who are going to have heavy expectations, you're not going to cut it. There's going to be a lot of competition for the, the clients with the big money bags. And first, you need to prove yourself at a smaller scale and then make your way up. So these kind of platforms, so Fiverr, as I said, there's also Upwork, um, these kind of platforms where you can just basically start an account and just start listing yourself and what you do, they are great. And they still give you enough freedom for you to be able to list down um, what you're doing, what you specialize in, and how you are better than your competitors, which is um, something we'll come to very soon again. If you are interested in Fiverr and Upwork, and I recommend that you be interested in these, then I also suggest that you take some courses on how to create a good Fiverr listing. Now, I will also be making some content about this from my side. I myself, I'm not um, offering my services on Fiverr, but I like the platform, I find it interesting. I've also hired from Fiverr, so I know the other side, I know what we're expecting and I know what convinces me to hire someone versus just scrolling through a listing. So I will be also making a course about that. If you're interested, uh, then again, um, you will have the link below to uh, get notified as soon as there's content about this. So again, Fiverr, Upwork, Freelancer.com, I think there's loads of smaller websites as well, but create 
your own listing there, start your presence, start getting some easy clients there, and I'll be adding some resources to help you on finding these initial clients and getting hooks and getting these clients really interested in what you have to offer. Secondly, you can go and create your own website. Now, creating your own website requires a bit more technical skills and it's also a bit more of an investment because you actually have to pay some money there just to keep the maintenance of the website going. And also, if you do not have any experience designing websites yourself, then if you want to have a decent looking enough website, you're going to have to hire somebody to do it for you. Now, the good thing is it's relatively easy to make websites uh, these days. Um, personally, I can vouch for um, WordPress with Elementor. That's how I've made my own website. Uh, there's plenty of tutorials there on what you can do. But again, you need to have a little bit of money to be creating uh, those websites. So usually what I recommend is start with the freelance platforms. And as you start getting clients, and of course, assuming you keep them satisfied and they keep asking for more work, you can uh, slowly direct them towards your website. You can say, okay, this is if you want to book some more services or the like, or you want to know a bit more about my portfolio and what I do, then this is my website. This will be a good idea to, uh, to start driving some traffic there. You can also start creating some uh, blogs and articles or any kind of content that can rank you on Google for your specific services. There's so many courses on how you can do this blogging specifically for your own business niche. But the overall objective there would be to build up your website and gain some kind of authority and have uh, traffic coming ideally from Google, from where your clients are going to be searching for. So for, for instance, ideally, when your clients are going to be uh, typing in Amazon virtual assistant hire or something like that, that you also appear in the search results. Now, you're probably never going to beat the big platforms that have millions of uh, visitors per month. But even if you are on the second page or so, you're still going to have a little bit of the traffic coming and that is still going to be traffic that's going to be ready to be converted into clients. And the good thing with your own website is there's no competition. It's not like the platforms where you're going to have your listing, your just your, your little photo and your description next to dozens and dozens of others there. It's just going to be you. You're just going to have loads of space to market yourself, to talk about how great you are, how your um, past clients were really satisfied with your work. And it would, speaking of which, it would be also a good space for you to talk about your satisfied clients on Fiverr. So you can sort of sell yourself by saying, look how successful I am on these freelancer platforms. So you can book me. And by the way, it's cheaper to book me or my services through my website than on Fiverr. Of course, there you'll be diverting some traffic and then you'll be having these clients into your own funnel, into your own little world, let's say, where they're not going to be tempted to look left and right to see if somebody is offering something better. So to summarize, having a website is good if you already have established yourself, if you already got some interest and some clients. It's also good if you already have some spare money that you can invest into building your own website and maintaining it. Uh, it's also great if you already have some experience building websites or if you don't, if you have at least the means to hire somebody to do that for you, which you can also get people to do that from Fiverr. So it's, it's a good platform to stay on in, in general, uh, even if you're offering services or um, asking for services. And you can use it as a sort of hub where all your traffic is going to come through. So you will be looking to funnel your um, your clients from Fiverr, from um, Upwork, from all the freelancer platforms onto there. And you can also create some content that will be ranking on uh, search engine platforms and you will be getting some traffic there. But this is, again, a space where you, you have full control. That's a good thing with a website. You have full control. 
you can decide what's going to be there and you have the full possibility to really market and sell yourself. And as you're going to be wanting to have uh, to be offering services of a higher and higher standard and level, which means also that you'll be paid more money uh, per units of work per hour, then uh, you're going to be needing this platform. You're going to be able to really sell yourself because on a platform like Fiverr or Upwork, where usually, well, I don't want to give too much of a number there, but you might have people uh, offering their services, other VAs offering their services for around $15 an hour. Um, if you jump up to 50 or 100 or 150 dollars per hour, then clients are going to be really expecting something from you. They're going to say, okay, well, I can waste fifteen dollars per hour on somebody if it doesn't work out but a hundred or 150 i want to make sure it's worth my money so there's a lot more convincing to be done and when you're just one little man um or woman um along a, a long list of potential candidates it's going to be very hard to sell yourself properly versus having your own website so going into a bit of length there but that's the full scope of why you would want to develop your own website. So next is social media. Now, I don't need to tell you that social media is really important nowadays for any kind of online business, and especially if you are a single person. Now, you probably have heard already some tips and how to manage social media. And in general, here are the big rules, right? So people are going to go on social media, they're not really going to go there to hire somebody. So the, the big rule with social media is don't try to sell yourself on social media, at least not directly. Social media, uh, Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, all of this. LinkedIn, maybe there's more selling yourself because it's a, it's a business platform, but uh, especially Instagram, the biggest one right now, it's not going to be about finding clients directly. What you want to be doing is, again, to start a certain online presence and a sense of expertise. Being uh, an Amazon VA, and especially if you want to upgrade to being a consultant where you're going to be making uh, a lot more money per hour, requires you to really establish a sense of trust. And trust is built over time and it's built through exposure. That means that people, potential clients, are going to be seeing you on a somewhat regular basis and you're going to be offering them something valuable. Just dropping a little bit of wisdom or expertise, just showing what you're capable of doing, but not directly asking for sales. You're going to be just over time with the different posts, there's loads of different formats. I'm not going to go into that. There's plenty of courses that go into how to do marketing with social media. But more specifically, being an Amazon VA, you're going to want to show that you are a master of Amazon. You're going to want to show that you're so much of a master that you're giving out tips, that you're saying, this is what you should do. In this case, this is what you can do, or you can do um, any kind of vlogs, uh, for instance, where you're just showing yourself being at work. Here again, it's, it's a balance between entertaining and still showing your value. You don't want to be boring as well. You don't want people to just scroll through because I think I, I, I don't give a crap what this person's life is about. You want them to stop and think, oh, well, that's interesting. And you want these people to be sellers on Amazon who could be in need of a VA. And then that way you will start to establish a certain um, a certain expertise, a certain sense of trust as they, as they start seeing your content over and over again. You want them to think, wow, this guy seems to know his job. He seems to know how to do this or that. Of course, making a page or uh, any kind of um, presence as an Amazon VA is going to be difficult. You're not going to have thousands and thousands of followers. It's going to be difficult to create entertaining content, especially. But if you're able to do it, then you might create trust really easily. And even if you don't have thousands and thousands, 
as an Amazon VA, you're not going to be working for hundreds of clients at a time. So you only need a, a few, uh, maybe even one or two clients to really be convinced about what you can do. And so this is a numbers game. 99.9% .9 of people who will uh, see you online on social media will just skip you thinking, okay, cool, but whatever. I don't, I don't care very much or that's, that's not what I'm looking for. But if you can get just even the smallest, just a few people just interested in you, then that already sets you out of the pack because there's going to be a lot of your competition, a lot of other Amazon VAs, they're not going to go through that. They're not going to make the effort to try and establish themselves online and to sort of connect with their clients. They're just going to be posting on these, uh, on these, on the platforms I mentioned before. Uh, this is what I do. This is what I can do. This is the price. Full stop. If, if you're interested, contact me. And if you just do this, then you're just going to be one in a million. You're not going to. You're not going to shine. You know, you're not going to show yourself as being any better, a better choice than the others. So any kind of extra effort there is going to really push you forward. And yeah, as I said, it can be just even a few clients who see you. But if these are some high clients who are looking to get somebody, uh, a VA to work for them full time, then you only need really to um, to convince one of them and that's it. And then you, you're set until you decide to upgrade. So this is in general the approach that you want to have with social media as an Amazon virtual assistant. So some tips to be able to shine and to stand out for the crowd. The first one is specialize yourself in something. There are so many Amazon VAs who just cover the surface of every single topic and then they're not really standing out. They don't seem to be specialized in anything. And I noticed that if everybody is the same, then nobody's special, right? Sometimes you will have some clients who want some very specific work done. They, they took care of the rest and they want, for example, a PPC specialist. Now, if you just do what a lot of uh, Amazon VAs are doing on these platforms and you list, I can do everything. I can do, uh, I can do PPC, I can do supply chain management, I can do keyword research, I can do uh, shipments, I can do uh, new product research, all of it. Then it, it, it's just going to feel like, and I'm, I'm saying this from the point of view of the, the client, right, who would be hiring. It just feels like there's no real expertise, there's no mastery. We always have this idea that if somebody says they're good at everything, then they're not really good at anything. That they're just somewhat average. And yeah, that's one of the biggest tips I can give is firstly, try and find out where you work best. So maybe you find yourself being really comfortable with advertising, or maybe you're a master at shipments and um, getting in contact with suppliers uh, you can get on the phone and talk and and managing a different uh, shipment reports and giving uh, clients a nice and neat idea of what's coming, when and where. Or maybe you're um, great with keyword research. Maybe you're very creative. You have a really good understanding of uh, how products might be called from different uh, points of views or cultures, or you, you know you're familiar with the features. Whatever it is, try and find out where you can really stand out and then mark this onto your own um, as your own signature. Let's say this is where you're really going to shine. Let's put a simple scenario, right? If you've got 10 people and 10 uh, Amazon VAs, right, on any platform and they all say they're just about the same, then whoever is going to somewhat stand out, let's say in reviews or uh, the lowest price is going to amass most of the traffic there because there's not going to be much reason to hire anybody else besides them. And then it's just going to end up in uh, a price and review wars where everybody is going to try to be cheaper than the other one. And then you're not going to be really making any money. You're going to be slaving away and it's, it's not going to be good for you. 
Now, if only one of you, and let's say that would be you, who specializes in what specifically one, uh, one customer is looking for, then it doesn't matter how well reviewed the others are, it doesn't matter how cheap they are. If you are the only one offering that, or you really stand out as being the expert in that field, then you're going to really amass a lot of trust and expertise again, and you're a lot more likely to close the sale then. So again, specialize yourself. Find something that you're good at or something that you have found that there's not so many uh, other Amazon VAs who are good at it. Of course, there needs to be some, um, some demand for it, right? So don't specialize yourself in a tiny, small area of Amazon that nobody is ever looking for. This is going to be a sort of, um, you've got to play this as it needs to be big enough that you're still going to have people looking for it, but small and niche enough so that you're going to stand out from the crowd and you're going to be the absolute best choice if somebody is looking for that specific area. One of the big tip I can give you to gain some exposure in the early stages there is to really have a beautiful listing if you're gonna be on these platforms or a really beautiful website um, if you decide to go for that as well. We are visual creatures, okay? So even if on paper or on, on text in this case, you might be the best choice or you, you have really good, um, you might have some uh, really good price and again, you're showing your expertise. If on the platforms where you can have a picture, it's just going to be a selfie of you in a dark room, that's not selling. That is not going to convince anyone of your expertise. Similarly, if you just have a sort of cheesy Photoshop cut of yourself onto a background, that, that's not going to be so appealing. So I would definitely suggest that you um, either improve uh, your image by learning how to do it yourself or even invest in getting somebody to create a, a nice design for you. Again, Fiverr is good for all that. So it's, um, it's a good platform again where you can um, create your own listing and then hire other people from other Fiverr's listing to help you improve your own listing. And in my experience, it is really worth it. Again, I'm talking from the side of the clients, but it definitely works on me. When I see a really well polished listing that looks professional, it has a really nice image, it has some really nice copy as well, um, it's, it's already getting me towards buying. Whereas if it's just a cheap price, but then I'm just seeing an image, uh, a picture of somebody's nose, it's not really selling. So what I advise you to do is ask friends, family and colleagues after you've made that listing to see if it's appealing, um, especially if um, they're sort of, well, the more distant from you, the better, because usually family and friends they might say that it looks nicer than it actually is. So try and find somebody who would be somewhat unbiased and would give you just the honest truth about how it looks. And then just going, keep going through this until you have a listing where all you're hearing is, yes, that looks good, that looks appealing. Naturally, the best results will come through the clients themselves. So you will see if you have a good listing, then clients are gonna be uh, clicking on your own listing more often, you're going to have more requests, but this is an important point. So along with specialization, again, you want to stand out from the crowd and standing from the crowd, it means not only in terms of what you're offering, but it means also in terms of how you're displaying yourself. Ideally, you're mixing them both so that whenever somebody, a visitor, a client, takes a look at your listing, they can already understand straight away what your specialization is. So let's say for instance, that you specialize yourself in creating Excel reports. So doing reporting for Amazon, that's what you wanna do as an Amazon virtual assistant. Then a good idea, just the top of my head, of um, an, an image for your listing would be uh, an image that contains, for example, the Excel logo and the Amazon logo in it. 
The good thing with that is straight away, people understand what you're about. Amazon and Excel. And then you can style it behind, make it nice, have a, a pro, um, professionally done cutout of yourself so that you're still showing that it's you and it's not just anybody. You know, you get to create some sort of trust with the image. It's a, it's a human offering this service and not some, some distant uh, company with no face. Uh, this works, again, quick tip there. Uh, this should also link with your social media that you always have an image of yourself so that whenever clients see you, uh, it's sort of branding. They, they keep reinforcing the image whenever they, they see you that uh, this is what you can do and you have a certain level of expertise. If you have listings of yourself without your image, then it starts being confusing linking you or the client's image of you with um, whatever content or um, offerings you're putting forward. Finally, we're coming to setting your price. Now, when you're starting out, um, you might be tempted to start with a very low price to undercut your competition. Now, sounds good, but it's not a good idea because again, this doesn't communicate expertise. Now, at the beginning, if you don't have, since you do not have any reviews, then of course, you're not going to price yourself as being premium. But at the same time, you don't want to make it seem like your labor is so cheap that it's going to be low quality. In general, over time, you want to keep the price reflective of the value that can be expected of you. Uh, so until you've gotten a lot of expertise, yes, you're not gonna go into the premium, but don't sell yourself too low either. The good point usually when you want to start off and you don't have so much expertise, uh, is going to be a lower average. So I recommend that you look at uh, on the platforms what others are offering around what price point they are. Again, make sure to compare apples with apples that you're comparing uh, Amazon VAs that are offering the same services as you, okay? There's different services. They might be worth different uh, differently, but it's different amounts of work. So make sure that you're looking at Amazon VAs who are offering the same thing as you. From then on, take the average of what they are asking for and then try to set yourself about 20 to 30% cheaper. This is usually a good starting point. And besides the pricing, I recommend that as a first hook that you offer something beyond what uh, is normally offered. So for instance, if a lot of Amazon VAs are offering, uh, let's say a simple keyword research um, or one sheet of keyword research for $10, let's say that you go the extra mile. So for the same price of 30% less that you're offering, say two sheets at the beginning. And then when you have the first contact with the interested clients, make it clear that that is because you're starting off and that is going to disappear. So that sort of shows that you have an expertise, that you're not just doing this because you're low value, but because you're starting off. So far, we've explained what the client's requirements are gonna be and what skills you're gonna need as an Amazon virtual assistant. And we've talked about how you can come into contact with clients, how you can get them interested, how you can get them to close a contract with you. Now, the next step is going to be about upgrading your income. Now, being an Amazon virtual assistant is already going to give you a certain salary. If you work full time as an Amazon VA, you're going to be making a decent amount of money depending who you work for. And as you gain more and more experience and hone your skills, you're going to be able to charge more. However, that is still going to be relatively low salary in comparison to the maximum ceiling that you can make with this kind of skill set that we've talked about. So what do I mean by that? What will be the job then? Well, the kind of job that you could do with this kind of skill set, plus some other skills that I'm going to talk about, is to be more of an Amazon consultant. So what's the difference between an Amazon virtual assistant and an Amazon consultant? 
Well, the main difference is mostly in doing operational work versus doing more strategic and analytical work. So what do I mean by operational? Operational means all the kind of tasks that is, for example, adjust the bids or add the keywords to a listing or add, add pictures to a listing. It's basically all the kind of work where there isn't any kind of strategy, there isn't any kind of analysis. It's you've got to do A, do B, do C, and then it's either incomplete or completed. Now, this kind of work usually is not paid as much because there isn't so much risk involved with it. That means from a client's perspective, you just need to be able to get somebody who can do it and then that's it. There isn't so much risk about your business. So if um, if you uh, if you muck it up, if you're not able to do the task very well, it's going to be quite obvious and it's not going to have usually, of course, a big impact on the whole business. Whereas an Amazon consultant is going to be doing a lot more analytical and strategic, which means that that's going to be a lot more about um, open questions. So it's not going to be about do A, B and C. It's going to be where do we go from here? What's the status quo? What are our opportunities, our threats, our strengths, or weaknesses? And what's the direction that we should be taking right now? Now, the reason why this kind of work is paid a lot more in general is because it, there's a lot more risk and a lot more reward associated with it. So with Amazon, this can mean, for example, what kind of product do you want to bring onto the market? So product research, for example, here is very important. It's more of a strategic kind of task because choosing the product once you um, once you have ordered the product from the suppliers and you know you can't just buy five units you're going to have to buy it in thousands so there's going to be that initial investment of thousands and thousands of dollars or euros or whatever the currency just a lot of money just to get that product eventually listed on amazon and if the initial research was not right then all of that money is basically going into the bin. You're going to lose so much or the clients are going to lose so much. That's why it's so important to have somebody who's qualified. And of course, um, somebody who's qualified might also ask for a much higher spend per hour for this kind of work. And ideally, well, that could be you. That could be you going from just being an Amazon virtual assistant earning maybe on average 15, 20, 30 dollars an hour to being well over 100 if you're able to make these correct analyses. So what I'm going to be talking about here um, in this section are going to be the kind of skills that are going to be necessary for you to become an Amazon consultant. So if that's what you're interested about, if you want to um, go into the future, slowly move from just being a virtual assistant towards being a consultant and then making a lot more for your money. And also it's going to be a lot more fun, I got to say, because you're looking at the whole picture and you have you're doing work that impacts a whole business. And it's it's just so much more satisfying as well than just doing repetitive mundane tasks that uh, that you get because uh, sellers or your clients can't be bothered with doing it themselves. So you get a lot more money. It's a lot more satisfying. You feel like uh, you have a lot more responsibility. So I definitely suggest that once you've already so, uh, sort of learned and, and practiced well the role of being an Amazon virtual assistant, that you slowly learn the following skills to become an Amazon consultant. So without further ado, let's explain them. So the first skill that you're going to be needing to use as an Amazon consultant is going to be general understanding and ability to make recommendations for a business in general. Now, my background is in business studies. I have a master's with honors with, uh, in business studies. And the first thing you've got to understand is how does a business work? So what are the different uh, parts of a business? What is 
the main goal of a business and understand, understanding all the different parts that come into a business is critical if you want to be a consultant. Why? Because if you do not know how a business works, then you can make some recommendations about some part and then that's going to impact some other parts of the business. And if you don't consider them, then your recommendations are going to be invalid. So one example of that could be, for instance, that you could say, um, my analysis shows that you would be making a lot more revenue if you spent a lot more money into marketing, into advertising for specific campaigns, for instance. But if you don't have an overview, then you might not see how this affects the rest of the budget. And then there might not be that budget um, for, for example, buying, um, buying the goods from uh, the manufacturers, from the suppliers. So you have a lot more being spent on advertising, but then you're not going to have enough to be buying the goods. And so you might end up selling everything off and then you're going to be thinking, well, that's great. We re really increased our sales velocity. Uh, our listing has gone up in uh, organic ranking because we've been making so many more sales, but then we're out of stock. There's no goods because they couldn't be purchased because we had to wait another month before for the next payment before we had the money to bring in the new goods. So you see that there's always an impact across the whole business and you need to wrap your head around that. You need to understand how a business truly works, what the business objectives are as well, so that you, when you make recommendations, you're aware of how it's going to impact each different part of the business. Also related to this is understanding the business environment. So you have already some standard models that can be used to have an idea of what the whole business environment is like. So for example, some very classic models of, for example, the uh, strength, weaknesses, opportunities, threat matrix. That's one of the most classic one you can use. So what does that mean for those of you who are not familiar with it? So that means you look at the business's strength in its whole ecosystem. You look at its opportunities. What are the good opportunities for the business to grow? What are the weaknesses, the points where the business in comparison to other similar businesses are not particularly good at? And then the threats. What do we have right now? What does the business have which is at risk when we're looking at people and companies who are out there? Having a good understanding of the whole business environment and especially being able to use specific models to uh, provide an understanding of the client, of how their business is doing overall in the whole uh, business environment, in the whole industry, is going to be one of the core things that you're going to be needing as a, a, a consultant. So it's not going to be just looking specifically at, uh, let's say, the nitty gritty details on Amazon, for example, the listing quality or the PPC campaign performance. It's also going to be the ability to look at it all, to take a step back and think, okay, this is your whole business. What is your business good at? What is your business not so good at? What are the other businesses that are competing, that are trying to get a market share from uh, this specific market or industry that you're in and what's the dynamic here do you have any opportunities what is it that we could do what is it that's threatening us and that we need to protect ourselves against all of this is going to be one of the most important abilities that will really make you into a great amazon consultant now disclaimer a lot of clients will not directly ask you to make this kind of analysis as an Amazon consultant, but being able to provide it is going to really bring value to whichever client you're bringing. And who says value brought means more money for you. Simple as that. The next thing is going to be your ability to create reports, reports that are going to be clear, data based and actionable. Now, I'm quite interested in this. I do this a lot in my own work. I spend a lot of time creating reports and making recommendations for my own clients. And I actually plan to be creating a course right now. It's already uh, in creation. So if you're interested, 
uh, in this if you want to learn how you can uh, create your own reports or more importantly take the raw data from Amazon whether it's PPC data, sales data, stock movement data, any kind of data that Amazon does provide you that's relevant for the performance of your client's business and uh, taking all of this into a nice constructed report that tells you okay this is what's going on and this is what we, su uh, we suggest we should do then I suggest that you subscribe to the link below and you will be able to be notified as soon as the course is live. Another point uh, which is related to the first point is going to be the ability to analyze competition. Now, in the first point, uh, I talked about understanding the whole business environment, and this time it's going to be more about understanding the competition directly on Amazon. So, ability to analyze other listings, compare it with your uh, client's listings, and then see what opportunities they are, what strengths they are, how the listings can be improved, if it's worth continuing the product, if there's a product opportunity there, all of this um, and I've already made a course about this that goes over the big lines of how to conduct a competition analysis so if you're interested you can just check my profile and then see the other course it's already live here uh, on Udemy uh, otherwise you can also subscribe um, below to see more courses that are going to be related to this in the future competition analysis in general is uh, a topic that falls within a lot of other topics so it is definitely one of the most important skills that you'll need as an Amazon consultant and even as an uh, Amazon virtual assistant though because it's more strategic and analytical in nature you're not going to be asked to conduct so many uh, competition analyses as a virtual assistant or they're going to be at a low level and also if you're able to do really good competition analyses then I would suggest you really spike up uh, the, the price that you charge for it because it's not, uh, again, an operational task and it's something that has a high impact and you should be getting your money's worth for it. If you're interested in learning how to create a good competition analysis on Amazon, then again, I suggest you um, at least check my video. Um, right now it's free, so it's, um, it's something that you can definitely benefit from, I believe. The next skill is going to be able to set OKRs and to analyze the KPIs. Okay, so what do they mean? <laughs> so an OKR is an objective key result. What that basically means is just well-defined, time-constrained goals for the business or the department. So any company or business now that is that wants to be doing quite well uh, over time in the future needs to have clear defined objectives. For example, for the next three months, that's something that I do mostly with my clients is uh, we define in uh, smart goals, which mean that these are measurable goals um, with them over the next, say, three months. So for instance, uh, a good OKR would be, we have managed to raise our revenue per product from X number to Y over this next quarter. And then you break this down into smaller actionable points, into key results uh, that all contribute towards achieving this bigger OKR. So having a knowledge of how this works, of how to uh, set them, how to track them, is going to set you up as a, a good Amazon consultant. Again, here it goes, it's about being structured, having uh, a system uh, for working, for development, and um, it's, it just makes all the other tasks that much easier. Having that structure is going to show to your clients that you're not only structured, but also that every single task that you're going to be doing, every single thing that you're going to complete is going to fit within the overall objective of the business. So when you get asked, okay, why are you doing this? You can say, I'm doing this task specifically because it helps complete that objective, which helps complete this objective. And that is what you want for your business. When you can justify it that way, 
then you can really show what your clients can expect in terms of results. It's going to be easier to forecast the results, uh, which means that it's going to be easier for you to justify um, saying, hire me because I'm going to help your business. It's not going to be like, well, I'm hiring your business because, well, in general, I tend to do good stuff and it tends to work. I think I'm not sure because I don't really uh, track the data. No, you will say this is what is done for this and this and this, and this is what you wanted. Yes. Okay. So this is how we're going to achieve it. If you have a plan, then people are much more likely to say, great, sounds good. To what bank account shall I transfer the money? As an Amazon consultant, you can really advise businesses well on how they can do their product research and how they can look into bringing new innovative products into their portfolio that are going to be competitive on the markets. And again, because it makes such a difference in the um, potential revenue, there's a high risk versus reward. It can completely fail and lose thousands of dollars, or it can work really well and then uh, triple or increase five times the revenue of your clients, then this is going to be one of the most uh, valuable points uh, from hiring an Amazon consultant. And a lot of clients are going to be looking for this when they're looking to hire an Amazon consultant online. They're going to be looking for somebody to do product research for them. And there's a lot of uh, people already offering services to do uh, product research, but very often this is what I would qualify as inferior work. So they are just doing a basic analysis, which is just looking into keywords. Okay. Are, are there a few competitors? What's their star rating? Are they making good money? Okay. Yeah. Sounds about good. Let's send it off to the client. And that kind of basic work that is not going to get you into the high, uh, high level wages per hour. So this is something that maybe for a small business you can still do. Um, but if you want to really be getting top clients who are going to give you top money for your work, you need to go beyond that. So first you need to, again, learn all the skills I've already mentioned. So the business uh, understanding of the business environment, um, be able to analyze uh, the business environment, the, the competition, see the strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, threats be able to analyze the competition at a deeper level, be able to analyze and uh, create useful reports and have all of this structured into OKRs and KPIs where it, the tasks are very well defined and you see exactly how each task contributes to uh, the overall, um, overall objective that was defined based on your previous analysis. So, uh, yeah, this all fits within the whole ecosystem. This is why Amazon consultants can charge so much because they have the full knowledge uh, across the whole spectrum. So advanced product research, so product research that goes beyond just the basics of keywords and rating reviews and revenues takes all of this into account. High level Amazon consultants are going to be looking at the whole industry, the whole business, the whole the whole everything I want to say to be able to make real recommendations about the direction which a business should be going towards. So some examples, for instance, of why this could be so important would be if you have a, just a business that just follows every single product opportunity that it finds without, um, without any concern for uh, branding or for suppliers or anything as such might be, maybe they'll be selling toothpicks one day, they might be selling uh, some shoes the other, they might be selling kitchen utensils. It's all mixed and all of this is going to prevent the business from having a real business identity to really understand what, the, what it's good at because you cannot be good at toothpicks, you cannot be good at uh, shoes, you cannot be good at these kitchen utensils or whatever it is. If it's all over the place, then you are not as a business going to have the opportunity to put it all together to say, this is what we're good at. This is what we're good at and our competitors cannot do. If you're just all over the place, 
other businesses can replicate it. And there's a lot of clients who have a business like that and they are in need of a consultant who can tell them, okay, first you need to specialize yourself. You need to understand this. What are you, what is your business good at? Sometimes it's just the one person leading it. What are they good at? What is it that they can do that others cannot? Maybe they have some advantage in terms of supplier contacts. Maybe they have some, spe uh, some special software that allows them to have some kind of product feature or advantage that is going to um, give them a, a pricing advantage for a specific market. But if they're selling loads of different products in different markets, they can't benefit from that. So this is again just an example of what you would be doing as an Amazon consultant. And because this kind of work, again, can really change your whole business and increase tenfold or hundredfold its revenue, then you are going to be able to ask for um, a much higher wage per hour. So in conclusion, to wrap all of this up, if you want to go from being a virtual assistant to a consultant, you need to have a good understanding of the whole business environment. You need to know how to create good reports, how to analyze the competition, how to structure all the tasks and objectives into overarching strategies for clarity of purpose. And you need to be also able to create great product analyses that take into account all of what was said before. I also recommend that you learn about branding and how to create a strong brand. This is because nowadays, especially with uh, data being so available to everyone, it's become easier and easier to just jump on product opportunities and just grab a product, slap a, uh, a product name on it and put it on the market. And because there's a lot more sellers who are doing that, then the importance of being able to distinguish yourself, to step out from the crowd and say, hey, look at me, I'm unique, I'm special, and you should choose me because I'm different and I'm better from all the others, that's becoming even more and more important in internet shopping these days. So I've already made a course about the basics of branding. And if you're able to learn from this, then that's something you can always communicate to your clients and you can make rec recommendations about how to brand and differentiate themselves so that they can be making more money, which in turn means, of course, you're making more money. So overall, going from being an Amazon virtual assistant to being an Amazon consultant does require quite a bit of extra knowledge. You need to know, I like to put it like it's an onion, right? With loads of different layers. And as an Amazon virtual assistant, you only need to know maybe a couple layers. You only need to know the more center operational ones and not so much the big, uh, bigger macro environment ones. But if you want to upgrade your income, then you have to learn all these different layers and be able to make recommendations and create structure based on all of these layers. Now, this might seem like a lot at first. I know I've, I've explained a lot of different ideas there and I don't expect you to remember them all right now, but uh, the only recommendation I can give you is to slowly learn about those as you're gaining experience as a virtual assistant. So you can do this gradually as you already work as a virtual assistant and you're making a, a decent salary there based on what we mentioned in the, in the previous sections, then over time you can start learning about how to be an Amazon consultant. And as you gain more and more skill and experience, you can slowly raise uh, the amount of money that you ask for the, the work you're doing because naturally it increases in value as you learn more and as you practice it more. And uh, the first steps you can be doing right now is um, yeah, to start learning them. As I mentioned, I'm providing a lot of content about this. I'm also planning to provide even more content. It's already in the pipeline. It's taking a bit of time for me because I'm working full time with my own clients and I'm doing these videos in my spare time. Um, but 
If you've already enjoyed what you've heard so far and you want to learn more and you want to upgrade your income, as I said, then you can already check them out uh, still at the same link that I've provided to you. Um, you will get notified and you can also check uh, my website for uh, more information, though there will be definitely some free courses here on Udemy. This is the end of the course. I hope that you found it useful and that this is going to help you become the best Amazon virtual assistant that you can be. If you want more courses like this, more advice, more content, then I suggest that you subscribe to the link below to get notified when a new course comes online on Udemy. In the meantime, feel free to check the existing courses, namely right now, the competition analysis and the branding. If you have any questions, if anything's unclear, if you want to have more details about some specific aspect, don't hesitate to contact me directly. I will do my best to respond to you as soon as I can. As a little present for sticking all the way to the end, I'm giving you five extra special secret sales tips that you can use with your future clients to impress them and hopefully increase your chance of getting hired. Just follow the link that's going to be shown or in the description and you'll be able to download them and apply them in no time. I would ask you as a favor to leave a review for the course. If you've liked it, or even if you haven't liked it, I would ask you to still uh, voice your opinion. It helps me, it motivates me to create also more content like this. As I said, I'm working full time, so I'm doing this in my spare time instead of doing what normal people do, I suppose. So uh, yeah, let me know what you think, what you feel. And if you can also share this with any friends or colleagues who you think they would be interested in this, then please do so. On that note, I thank you for your time. I wish you the best of luck and I hope to see you in the next course.